Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. Today I'm going to talk about my top 10 favorite books that I read in 2019. This list was both quite easy to make as well as kind of difficult. It was easy because I didn't actually rate that many books very highly in 2019. I gave out few five-star ratings. It was also difficult to make this list because I really wanted to do honorable mentions. I really wanted to do a list of favorite reads reads of the year, but I just didn't read enough to really be able to make those lists. So it's just a top 10 favorites list this year. Hopefully 2020 will be jam-packed with five-star books <laughs> in a way that 2019 was not. That aside, I'm extremely pleased with this favorites list. These really were the best books I read in 2019. I'm going to start this list with the five books that I've already done separate reviews on, so if you want to know more about them and my thoughts on them, you can go watch my reviews. The first one is my absolute favorite book of the year. If you asked me to pick just one book that sums up this year in reading for me, I could actually pick one. It's a bit of an unusual year, but that book is A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin. I've heard some people describe this book as space opera, which I don't really understand Stand. It doesn't actually take place in space. It is completely 100% set in a capital city on a planet, and the main character is from an independent mining space station, but most of the story has nothing really to do with that particular setting. In fact, I think it's more of a romance than a space opera, but honestly, what this book really is and what I truly love it for it's a science fiction novel about the concept of an empire and what makes an empire and its culture appealing and seducing to outsiders. What makes somebody wish to adopt another culture that is not their own and that is an active threat to their home and their original culture. There is so much going on in this book. I loved every single aspect of it. I cannot think of a single flaw. I absolutely loved it. My review goes into more depth about the concepts and what this book is doing if you want to know more about that. Next is Atlas Alone by Emma Newman. This is the fourth book published in her Planet Fall series, and it is a direct sequel to After Atlas, which is my favorite book in the series. I was pretty much primed to love this book because it does continue with characters, themes, and a story arc in the series that I absolutely love. So yeah, I liked it very, very much. I am not very fond of the main character who is definitely unlikable, but despite that, the story was so interesting. I want to know where this series is going. I hope that there are another couple of books yet to come. Now, describing what this book is about is a little bit spoilery for After Atlas, so if you have read After Atlas and you want to know what this is about, you can go watch my review where I try to delicately talk about what it is without spoiling things too much. Then there is Exhalation by Ted Chang. This is his second ever story collection. Not exactly short stories because I think his natural length is more novelette and novella. I feel like this is a little bit of a cheat. My favorite books of the year are usually the first time I have read a book, but most of the stories in this collection were rereads for me. However, I am counting it here because the collection overall is new, and there are a couple of stories in this that are original to the collection or ones I hadn't read before that I did completely love. I talked about every single story in this collection in my review, so if you want to know more about the individual stories, you can watch that. But I think the summary of my feelings on this is that Ted Chang is one of the few short fiction writers who has absolutely never disappointed me. I find everything that he writes about to be very interesting. Sometimes the execution is not perfect, but usually he just blows me away, and I love the type of science fiction that he writes, where he takes an idea, extrapolates it, and says, if this were to happen, how would it affect people? How, how would it change the world? And the way that he does that is just amazing. Then there is Children of Ruin by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This is the direct sequel to Children of Time, which was previously a favorite book of the year for me. I think 2017, perhaps? A couple years ago. Children of Ruin is really more of the same. It is quite similar, actually, in plot structure to Children of Time. I still really loved it, though. I think it was just amped up to 11. It contains even more of things that I really enjoy, like interspecies communication and xenolinguistics. I love the way that Tchaikovsky 
Tchaikovsky writes about inhuman intelligences and inhuman bodies and communication styles and everything, he doesn't have to reach for alien extraterrestrial species to find these interesting inhuman characters. He creates them from things that we live alongside today, like spiders and octopuses, and it's absolutely brilliant. I get giddy and excited just thinking about rereading it. The fifth book that I've already done a review of is A Life Load by Joe Walton, and this is a bit of a surprise addition to this favorites list because I just felt I couldn't leave it off. It somehow perfectly represents the type of fantasy that I think I most enjoy reading today. It is a subtle, quiet, domestic fantasy novel. It is the complete opposite of the very popular epic high fantasy genre that we're being flooded with right now. I don't really enjoy reading that type of fantasy so much, and Life Load was the book I read in 2019 that really showed me what I actually enjoy in fantasy these days. I think that Walton did something very special with this novel. It is a bit dissimilar to her other works that I have read, and yet it also, I think in its DNA, has similarities to her previous books. So if you have read Walton's work and really enjoyed it, you're probably gonna like this one, but it is still a little bit unusual. Now moving on to the books that I did not do standalone reviews of because circumstances got in the way. The first one is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. This might be my second favorite book of the year if I had to rank them. This is a little bit surprising even to me, but I enjoyed every moment of reading this book and in particular the romance and the conclusion of the novel clinched it for me. It was bittersweet and just right it was perfect. This book is about a young woman named Cassiopeia who lives in 1920s Mexico, and one day she opens the mysterious chest in her grandfather's room and accidentally releases a Mayan god of death that has been imprisoned there. The god of death is connected to her, and they go off on a quest to recover his stolen body parts and to regain his throne from his brother. And I really thought there was great character development in this story. I I actually really liked the relationship between Cassiopeia and the god, and in particular, Cassiopeia really felt like a person to me. She was strong while being a little bit naive, she stayed very true to herself, but she wasn't completely self-interested, and I think that's a large part of why the decisions at the end of the book felt so right to me. It was wonderful. I really can't wait to get my hands on a copy of this book for myself. Next is Ancestral Night by Elizabeth Bear. I have really enjoyed previous works by Bear, particularly her fantasy, and this is the first full science fiction novel I have read by her, and I think it is her best work to date, at least of what I have read. And it felt important to me because of the themes of it, that it deals so much with mental illness, with trauma, PTSD, survivor guilt perhaps, and identity, but also it has some really exciting things in it that I just love in science fiction. I mean, ancient lost alien species, black holes, abilities to manipulate space-time, like, oh come on, it's great. And I wish that I had done that review of it I had planned on doing. You can see all the sticky notes in it. Perhaps I will still do that sometime and really get my feelings on this book out there, but it was really wonderful. I would possibly critique it for some things that happened in the second half that weren't as strong, that I felt um, we're kind of manipulating the plot to make certain things happen that didn't feel quite natural, but on the whole, it was just excellent. Next is Solitaire by Kelly Eskridge. This is a science fiction novel that I wish I had gotten to years ago. I had intended on reading it for a long time because I knew it would just be something I would enjoy. Very glad I finally read it in 2019. This story is briefly summarized about a young woman who is poised to have 
education, power, authority, everything you could ever want. She's about to step out onto the global platform to be a leader of the entire world. And then she is blamed for a horrible accident that kills many people, including her entire social circle. And when she comes out the other end, having lost everything, the story is really about how she reconstructs her identity and herself. When everything has been taken away, who are you really? It was great. The only flaw in this book, in my opinion, is that the atrocity, the accident that the main character, Jackal, is blamed for is a bit too contrived, a bit too awful. Everything else is great. The last two books on this list are perhaps somewhat different from the first eight, but I loved them and I felt like they really needed to be on this list. The first one is Women in Art, 50 Fearless Creatives Who Inspired the World by Rachel Ignatovsky. This is the third in her Women in History series that began with Women in Science and Women in Sports. And perhaps I feel somewhat guilty for not putting those two previous books on favorites lists in the past because I can definitely tell over time that they have been very influential and inspiring. I expect that women in art will have a similar influence over the next couple of years for me, so I wanted to include it. Aside from that, this book, like the previous two, is so well done. It is mainly written and aimed for a younger audience, but I think it doesn't talk down to the reader. It is truly excited about the subject matter, about these women and their influence and their inspiration, that it just appeals to people of all ages, and it's so beautifully illustrated. I absolutely love Ignatovsky's art style. It is bold and vibrant, very colorful. It really brings the women and her books to life without being super realistic or anything. So yeah, Women in Art had to be on my favorites list this year. I learned a lot while reading it, and I will definitely come back to it in the future. The last book on my favorites of 2019 list is Finding My Elegy, New and Selected Poems by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is a poetry collection, and I'm very happy that I loved at least one poetry collection enough this year to include it in my top 10 favorites, because I read more poetry in 2019 than I had in all previous years of my life combined, and I really wanted to see some of it represented on this list. And yeah, I really love this collection. I also really liked the other collection I read by Le Guin, which was her very last one, published posthumously. But Finding My Elegy, I just, I blazed through it. It almost made me cry in places. I really felt something while reading it. Possibly because it's by Le Guin. You guys probably know by now, I love everything by Le Guin, with very few exceptions. But in a way, I think this is the type of poetry that I really enjoy. When I was reading poetry this year, I was trying to find the similarities between the pieces that worked for me and the pieces that just didn't. And I kind of now use Le Guin's poetry, in this collection in particular, as a lodestar. I'm looking for something that is similar to this in the type of poetry, the way it's written, the language, and also the topics and the themes in it. I can't wait to reread this, and I also can't wait to try to find copies of other poetry collections by Le Guin, because I think I'm just going to love all of them. And those are my favorite books of 2019. I am quite pleased with this list. Looking back on these books, I'm getting excited all over again, and I should probably just carve out some time right now to reread a few of them. Let me know if you have also read any of these books. Were they favorites of yours? What did you really enjoy reading in 2019? Leave me some comments down below, and I'll be back very soon with another video. And until then, bye.